Five reasons why most people will quit learning how to code in 2025. Let's get into it. All right, guys. I know I seem excited and you're like, wait, Joe, this is a sad moment in time for us as developers. Like, what's going on? Guys, I'm going to break it down for you guys. There's a lot of people trying to get in now that they're just not passionate about this job. They got told a lie. They got excited for no reason. And guess what? They're flooding up the market. There's people that's just applying to jobs that's not even ready to be applying to jobs. And guess what? This might be a good thing. This might be the cleansing. Okay. This is a, a detox of the industry right now. So again, we have to look at it from that side, that point of view, because if you actually like to code and you enjoy this type of work, the competition is taking themselves out. So let's give them five points of why people are quitting. Number one is AI is here. Okay. And that's freaking a lot of people out. People are thinking that that's it. It's over. What's the point of learning how to code when AI can do all the work? Why should I go in and invest time into something that pretty soon computers are just going to compute themselves? I see computer and sputing. <laughs> yeah, remember that line from camera, right? Guess what? We there, right? People are freaking out because of that, right? But at the same time, we're seeing situations like this where even the NVIDIA CEO is saying, hey, man, predicts a long road ahead for quantum computers. And I don't believe AGI, you know, is coming for any time soon. And hey, this might take 15 to 20 years for quantum computers to be really a, a, a big deal. So again, people are already freaking out and not understanding that guess what? You are going to evolve with what comes next. AI is just a tool. It's not really something that is going to replace you if you know how to use it. Of course, it's going to replace you if you don't want to learn the skills that's coming with AI. Again, it's like a guy in the 1800s, you know, holding on to his horse when he sees people driving cars. He's like, well, I'm never going to ride that car. I'm not learning that skill. Think smart. Start thinking about how can I go in and start using AI to go in and help me in this journey and make my life easier, right, as a developer. And learn how to use those tools because if you don't know how to use it, guess what? You're not going to have a job. You need to know how to use these tools. And that's scary, people. That's already getting half of the people out of here. Number two, unrealistic expectations. People are expecting to have a social media lifestyle. They are expecting that when they apply to a job, automatically they get hired. And if they watch a YouTube tutorial for eight hours and they pay $10 on Udemy, that that guarantees them to get a job. The truth is that right now we are back to 2018, 2019 numbers when it comes to jobs, which is a good thing. It's a healthy market. Believe it or not, I know you hear the tech layoffs and all of these things happening, but that's because people were getting hired in the middle of the pandemic. The pandemic was a moment in time that was special. We might never even see that again, <laughs> for real. Like that uptick of just like, hey, we need engineers, we need engineers, and everybody's getting hired. We might never see that for a long time, okay? That's just the facts. That was just a moment in time. We're now back to regular, okay? Jobs are there, but you have to go to the right jobs that you're supposed to be at, at the level that you're at. You trying to apply to a senior role when you are a junior developer that needs help and needs somebody to guide you and, and train you, guess what? You need to apply to the right roles for you to get success in this industry, okay? We're basically back to 2018, 2019. Okay, it's no more hype of we just hiring to hire. Right now, we're hiring people that's qualified, and that's scaring people because they're like, man, so it's not as easy as I thought. This shit was never easy. I've been doing this shit since 2011. I, I can tell you, it's never been easy to get into the industry. If you go into the right jobs, it becomes easier. But if you're trying to go into Google, that shit has never been easy. Number three, information overload. Once people go in and say, well, I want to learn how to code. I'm going to get into this career. And then they get presented with a front-end developer roadmap or full-stack developer roadmap. 
people start thinking twice about getting into this thing. I'll give you an example, right? If you look at this, anybody that looks at this for the first time and they say, okay, I got to learn this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill, all of these things, right? And I continue going down the list of all of the different things that I have to learn to quote unquote, become a front end developer, right? This is the roadmap website that <laughs> I don't know who created this thing, but it's just so overwhelming for anybody that comes and see this. And it's the same thing that you're going to see on social media, right? They're going to go in and tell you, Hey man, this is how you're going to be able to get your first job. But when you get presented with all of the skills and all the things that you're going to need to be able to get your first job, Anybody will want to run away from this thing, okay? Because it seems overwhelming, right? This is one of the reasons I created CodingPhase.com. Now, again, shameless plug. I can go in and tell you guys about this real quick. But yeah, on CodingPhase.com, this is why I focus on different skills, different things that you need to get your first job. Not every single job that you're going to find out here is going to be as a front-end developer. Front-end development is part of it, but you can get a job as things as, as a content editor, email developer, marketing specialist, automation specialist, Shopify developer. There's a whole bunch of different career paths that you can get started much faster than you trying to become a quote-unquote front-end developer, okay? That's just the facts. All right. If you look at all of those things that people are recommending you to learn, you're going to be here a year, two years trying to learn all of these things. The reality of it is that you need certain skills for certain jobs. And what you should care about is getting your first job in the industry. You're going to have time to learn all of the skills as a front end developer. But let's focus on you getting your first job. OK, again, things like content editing, right? Managing a website, webmaster. There's so many different job titles out here that people don't even pay attention. OK, most companies that are hiring, they're not even hiring from big tech companies. It's the small to medium sized companies, government jobs. Those are the ones that's giving jobs over here. OK, especially for beginners and people that are coming in into this industry. OK, if you look over here, look at this article, right? Non tech industry hire more tech talent workers than the tech industry itself. OK, a lot of people don't even know that. But you have to have the right skills. It's not just, well, I'm just going to learn front end development. That's too broad. Like that's too general. When you're trying to find your first job, you need something specific. I'm applying for this job. I'm building a portfolio for this type of job. And these are the type of jobs that hire beginners. If you apply to the right ones, you're going to get a job. But if you go in and you see something like this roadmaps that people will be recommending of course, people are going to get scared and be overwhelmed. And they're like, man, I got to get out of here. It's too much. Okay. Information overload. <laughs> now, before we move on to the next one, I'm going to say this, guys. I'm going to put a link below on the description. If you want to learn skills to get your first job, not the trendiest, not the most popular things, but the things that work and help you actually get into the industry. Click on the link below, go to codingphase.com. Trust me, I don't get paid to do these videos and do this YouTube thing and get views. I get paid to get results for my students. So <laughs> as you guys can see, guys, I'm making like $2 to $10 a day on YouTube. Like I'm not here to get views. I'm here to help people out and basically let them know, hey, man, there's better ways to get into the industry. And when you get results, I get results. So that's just the facts. Let's move on to the next thing. Number four, the comparison trap. If you are here comparing yourself to everyone you see on social media, somebody comes in and say, hey, I got hired in two months. Hey, I got hired in three months. Hey, I just got a $100,000 job. Hey, I just got a $150,000 job with $250,000 in compensation. Now I'm making 300 and something, 400,000, right? If you're comparing yourself to every single highlight, every single thing that you see on social media, guess what? You're already losing. OK, you already ready to quit. You already like, hey, man, get me out of here. I'm not getting results. I'm a loser. I suck. Right. You're comparing yourself to everyone that's out here. Compare yourself to yourself. OK, be a better you. 
Beat your last record, beat your last project. That's what you should be doing. You shouldn't be focusing on what everybody else is doing and what results they're getting. I give you a great example. I have a student who came in, she was a teacher for 10 plus years, okay? She came in, we told her the foundation, we told her everything that she needed to do, right? And she got hired in two months. Now, most of you guys will say that, damn, look at that. I knew it, right? This guy comes in, says he's going to get somebody hired in two months. But what you don't know is her background, right? She has 10 years as a teacher. Where did she get hired at, right? She got hired at a university working as a web administrator, managing the website of the university, okay? So guess what happened? Her background helped her go in and be able to get that job fairly quickly, and those are things that a lot of you guys get to have too, right? You have some certain background of like industries that you have worked at, right? And guess what? That can help you get a job even faster than most people. But that's the thing that we all don't know. Because when we see on social media, a highlight, a thing that pops up on TikTok, on a reel, we don't know this person's background. We don't know what university they went to. We have no idea what businesses they worked at, what industries they were working at. We have no idea what's their background, what helped them get that job so fast and so quickly. You have to change your mindset. I mean, think about it like this. Most people that are coming into this industry, they're coming in with four years of training, of just to try to get a job. We are lucky that as developers, self-taught developers, we are literally getting opportunities with a couple of months of training. There's kids going to school for four years out of their lives just to get their first job opportunity, and that's not even guaranteed. So if you come in and you get hired in six months or you get hired in a year, you're doing way better than a lot of people that spend four years to try to do this. I mean, or even people that I've seen trying to learn how to code on their own and supposedly take them two, three years to get a job. It's like, if you get hired in a year, shit, you're doing way better than most people. Okay. So as you can see, it's like, you got to change that mindset. All right. You can't continue comparing yourself to everybody else, especially when you see a highlight. That's like a, a, you know, a dunk from LeBron James. They're not showing when LeBron James misses a, a three-point shot. They're not showing when somebody steals a ball from LeBron James. They're not showing when LeBron James is getting dunked on by, you know, Giannis. Like, they're not showing that. They're just showing you the highlight of LeBron, what he did in the game. Okay? So, you got to also remember that. That's just how social media works. Stop comparing yourself to everybody else. Everybody's background is different. Okay? Number five which is one of the main reasons why people are quitting in 2025, is very simple. The lack of actual real world experience. A lot of people are taking courses and just doing exactly what the instructor does, okay? A lot of people are watching tutorials on YouTube and just copying exactly what's there and not even building anything themselves. And they put those same projects into their portfolio so they don't even test themselves, right? To go in and say, well, did I really learn this thing? Did I really understand how to use this technology? Did I really learn how to build this application? No, they don't even try that. They go in and build a sloppy portfolio, right? Put in a couple of, you know, dark theme and then from there go in and put in like a snake game or javascript memory game they put in a netflix clone they put in a another Next.js software as a service app that they seen on youtube right a whole bunch of different technologies that they don't even know how that shit works they just put them together and say hey hire me now right no you need to actually get real world experience okay you should go out there go on fiber go on upwork go on etsy create things okay get clients locally, join a Facebook group, okay? Reach out to people and say, hey, I'm a developer. Do you need a website? Let me build something for you. What can I help you? What can I help you automate, right? This is where we are in the world now. You can reach out to people, put your services out there. You don't have to get paid for every single thing. It's better to go in and say, hey, I did this for free, but I did it for someone that is going to really use this. 
Okay. And guess what? I can use him as a reference. I can use that project that is solving some type of problem for a business or for a young entrepreneur, et cetera. And they're actually using it on the wild. So now when I go to this interviews, I have something that I can talk about what I did professionally. Yes, that is a professional project. If you go in and get, I don't know, maybe build a website for a small restaurant in your neighborhood, right? They just opened up. They don't have a website. Hey, reach out to them. Build a website for them. Yeah, you would love to get paid, but shit, right now you're such a early stage that guess what? You might not get paid and that's fine because you're not doing it for the pay. You're not doing it for an extra $500, right? You're doing it because you want to get real world experience. If you don't have real world experience, it's going to be hard for you to get a job out here. There's a lot of different ways that you could get experience, but you have to go and do it. Okay. And it's not just watching tutorials and watching courses. You have to test yourself by actually creating real applications. If you do that, then now you can say, I really have this skill. I really can explain this to somebody because that's one of the main reasons that when you go to an interview, you could have a great portfolio, but then you're not landing the position is because you don't know how to explain the projects. You can't explain what you actually did. You can't explain why you use a certain technology, why this one's better than another one, why this framework is better than this other one, what made this project difficult. Like those things are questions that they're going to ask you and you're just going to say, um, um, yeah, no, it was, it was kind of hard. Yeah. You have nothing to say about it because you didn't do the project. You just watch a YouTube tutorial and just follow it through. This is not something that you want to do. Like you're watching a movie on Netflix. You're not trying to binge the new season of Game of Thrones. What you're trying to do is go in, watch a video, right? Or take a course and then test yourself by using the same skills that you just basically watched and, and learned. If you're not doing that, guess what? You just don't know it. You're not ready. Okay. So yeah, man, these are the top five reasons why people are going to be quitting in 2025. Now, again, as you can see, I gave you the reasons, right? And I also gave you the points on how to improve it and how to look at it at a different way. So you don't quit. This video might have seen when you clicked on it, like, oh, it's going to be another negative video. Another person telling me how, you know, I should quit because of this, this and this. No, I don't want you to quit. Okay. And yes, I do have a platform where we teach people how to code. Right. And it's not that I'm biased and I'm like, oh yeah, man, let me make sure that they don't quit. Cause man, we need to cash out. No, I don't care about that shit. What I care about is helping people that want to come in and switch careers. Right. I was a regular dude, just like you guys, right? Working in a parking lot attending, working as IT support, working in a warehouse. I've done every bullshit job you could think of. And I can tell you that this was the best decision that I did to join this industry. Okay. Not only did I learn this 10 plus years ago, but till this day, I'm still making money with the skills that I learned. Okay. Not only can I go in and work for any company, I could build my own businesses, my own software as a service, my own digital products. Like this is a, a, a gift that keeps on giving. Why will you quit now? Technology is here. This is the best time to be a developer. Don't get scared about all of these little things that we just covered. This is the moment for you. Take advantage of it, right? And yeah, you might say I'm biased because I got a platform. I don't care if you go to codingphase.com. I really don't because the people that want to use my services, they're going to come to me anyways, okay? Because we are the best at what we do. But at the end of the day, I want you, if you're learning from somebody else or taking an online course or, you know, building your own projects, don't quit this year. This is your year. You're already at the finish line. Now, let's finish the race. All right, guys. Anyways, it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. Your boy's back and I done did it again one more time. Please leave me a comment. Show me some love in the comments. Um, as you can see, we do this for the love. I enjoy coming in here, giving you guys some motivation and also to giving you guys some information about the industry. Uh, again, show me some love in the comment section and I'll see you guys later. Peace.